this video. <laughs> In this video, we're going to be talking about everything and anything that has to do with student accommodation in the university. So if you're a student looking to study for your undergrad or a student looking to study for your master's degree, your doctorate degree or whatever degree, your diploma or whatever degree you go into the university to get, in this video we're going to be talking about everything and anything you need to know about student accommodation, whether on-campus accommodation or off-campus accommodation. So if you're interested in this topic, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go down and smash the subscribe button. And if you are interested in this topic, maybe anything or everything that has to do with traveling for studies, then why don't you think about turning on the notification bell because we always drop topics about travel and tourism on Mondays, okay? And if you're here, then there must be something about what we're doing that you like. Come on, go ahead and give us a thumbs up so you let the YouTube algorithm know that we drop the kind of content you like and so they inform us and we can always drop more of this kind of content for you going forward, okay? So hold on to that thought, hold on to your wig, hold on to your bag, and I'll be right back. I'll catch you on the other side. You know the way I do it when I drop lyrical. Anytime I spit lyrical, philosophical, all the niggas mimical, but it's fair still. On take your literal, punch my score, lots of roll. Snap them on that. Hello YouTube, hello Chronix, hello everybody out there. How are you all doing today? I still remain your boy Fuse on the Fuse Chronicles. Do you want to go study in the university in a different country? So or do you look to become an international student, maybe go to the United States to study, go to Canada to study, or maybe you want to go to England, maybe go read book. Maybe you want to go to Russia, maybe you want to go to China, South Korea, or any of them countries out there to go study. Where are you going to stay? Have you thought about this before? Have you given it a lot of thought whether you want to stay on campus or off campus? Because these two places have two different criteria and characteristics. So have you thought about diving deep into what it would take to become someone studying in a different country and living in town instead of on campus? Well, you will not. In this video, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about where you're going to stay as a student, your student accommodation while you're studying, maybe as a local in your country but in a different city, or as a foreign student, international student, living from maybe from Nigeria, maybe you won't leave Nigeria, say so you won't go UK, maybe you won't leave Nigeria, say so you won't go study for America, maybe you won't go study for Canada or any of them countries. We're going to be talking about student accommodation. Now, what is the difference? What is the difference between on campus accommodation and off-campus accommodation? There are lots and lots of differences, okay? For one, on-campus accommodation, you're going to be staying in a hall or in a dorm with other students and most times you don't have control over who those other students are going to be. So you could be a Nigerian like me, like I was when I studied in the University of Northampton. You could be a Nigerian and you're going to be pitched with Chinese students. So it's going to be you, only you, one black person, Nigerian, and you're going to be staying with a whole lot of Chinese people. Or you could be one Nigerian or black boy from South Africa, from Ghana, and you're going to be staying with only Indian people. There are many things you need to take into consideration. For example, when I was staying with my Chinese neighbors, only one or two of them could speak English. The other ones were always speaking Chinese. And when you say hi, Chinese culture, they're kind of very shy and they're not very outspoken and outgoing like other cultures. So you have to take this into consideration. Another thing you need to take into consideration while staying on campus is the culture differs. And because the culture differs, different habits differ. For example, there's a time I wanted to go to the toilet to take a deuce, to take a shit, and I went to the bathroom and I saw a very huge lump of shit in the bathroom. So someone went there, took a shit in the bathroom and did not flush. That is very bad. I don't know about different cultures, but where I'm from, the kind of training I had as a little boy growing up, when you go to the toilet, you have to take care of yourself, take care of your business in there. That means shit and flush and clean up after yourself. So this happens. And some other times you might be rushing to go for your early morning class and the people who, men, boys, but they're taking care of themselves like girls, they're going about their business, having a shower, doing the makeup and whatever. So you stand outside the door praying to God, Jesus, please, I'm late. 
but they don't really care and they're just going about their business. It's just different cultures. In Africa, most people have short hair, forget fused with his dreadlocks, but most people have short hair. They go to the barber shop and they get a haircut. But Chinese people have full head of hair. Indian people have full head of hair. White Americans, white English people, Europeans and all the other ones, they have full head of hair. So they have to take care of that business in the bathroom and all. So you have to take this into consideration. What about off campus? Am I doing on campus? Am I just on campus? There are a lot of student centric activities that you would like. The karaoke night that you could go in the karaoke hall in the in on campus club and recreational place. You could just go there and have fun, drink beer, drink wine, sing songs with your friends. You could play pool if you're into snooker. There's a nightclub in on campus that you could just go have fun, drink, dance, party whatever and there's also the student union activities that makes you bond more with your fellow students from different countries on campus everybody on campus comes from one country okay so if you leave nigeria and you go to a different country everybody there comes from one country the locals who are from there there are people from eastern europe western europe north america south america asia africa that you could just mix up with and it just embodies the whole student experience and you're gonna have more fun knowing that the next door person might be from Mozambique and the other person might be from Russia and you just mix up with people. I remember because I'm into football, I like to watch football a lot. I'm an Arsenal fan. Go Gunners! <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan and I remember when we were watching an Arsenal game in the student union pub in uni at the time. There were people who were other Arsenal fans from Russia, from different places. So during halftime we were always chatting and talking to ourselves, how do you guys do this? How do you celebrate goals in Russia? How do you, so this always just embodies the human or the student experience. You need to be mindful that while staying on campus, like I said about the toilet habits and language issues, there, there are pros to it and there are also cons to it. Now what about staying off campus? Off campus is fun, okay? I was very fortunate to stay on campus and off campus because in the university you spend one year on campus and after that year you have to go off campus and start staying with other people. Staying off campus is cool because you can cherry pick the people who are going to be your flatmates. So people where you want me to stay with, with people where you want me to stay together for the same flats, you can cherry pick them. So the people you want to stay together with in the same flat, you can cherry pick them and say, okay, I want to stay with Paul, I want to stay with Charles, I want to stay with Osa, I want to stay with David. You cherry pick all these people because maybe you have your like-minded people, you love the same things, maybe you all smoke, maybe you all like football, maybe you all like to drink and you just want to have the same habits with people you stay so you can cherry pick them. When I moved from campus to off campus, I wasn't fortunate to cherry pick my flatmates. They cherry picked me and they were all girls. I was the only boy staying in the dorm, staying in a flat with all girls. Good and not good, I'll tell you why. When I was staying with all these girls, you know how girls are, every girl has that red flag period of the month, the period when they have the menstrual flow. And different girls control this or have different, should I say, experiences when it has to do with their menstrual flow. Some people have pain from menstruation, some people just, it just happens like the breeze, nothing happens. Some women or girls have the menstrual flow and they get rid of the tampons or their menstrual pads easily. Some people just throw it in the bathroom, they just take up the first one and just drop it on the bathtub and you just come there and you see blood everywhere, you see the tampons with blood everywhere. And some of, uh, maybe one or two of my flatmates were like this. My bedroom was very close to the bathroom upstairs. Now, I'm sorry, let me take you back. While I was on campus, we were six to seven boys on the floor and we had three bathrooms and two toilets. Three bathrooms and two toilets, but for some strange reason, the, the toilet habit varied, okay? But that's that's for that, we're, we're done with that. Now, off campus, the flat we got, we were how many girls? One, two, three, four. We were four, there were four girls and one guy, which was me. Now, we had one bathroom and toilet upstairs, and we had one bathroom downstairs, okay? I don't just know why. They don't make the amount of toilets and bathroom commensurate, so they don't make them equal numbers. But there's always more of one and less of the other. What happened one day was I wanted to use the bathroom. I entered the bathroom. I saw blood everywhere, like from the scene of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I was like, what is going on here? Jesus, there's blood everywhere. There was so much blood everywhere. It turned out one of the flatmates was in her period, and she did not clean up after after herself. I didn't find this funny. Another day. I finished my lectures. I'm not sure that was lectures or work because I was going to school and also working at the same time. So I'm not, I can't remember whether I was working, was it working, was it, 
was it was it work or was it lectures? But I finished one and I came back home. I was very tired, knackered. I just want sleep. I just I just tired. I just want rest. I was so tired and I wanted to rest. Only for me to get into my room and I found one of my flatmates, the girl sitting on my bed. Yeah, we used to have some stuff going on between us, but we ended and that's something else. Never ever have emotional or romantic things to do with your flatmate. You never shift where you sleep. It doesn't work. It never works. Okay? If you want me to make a video about justice alone, leave me a comment down below, below, below. Say fuse. I want to hear your animal secrets. Tell me more. And I'm going to make a video about this. Okay. So she was sitting on my bed and I said, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired that my room is not comfy as your room. I want to just, your bed is bigger. I want to lie on your bed. I want to sleep on your bed. I'm like, what? Get out. <laughs> and that's literally what I said. Get out and she left my room and I, I can't see her man. I don't know how she got the keys to my room to open my door because my keys were always on my person but this is the kind of thing that happens when you stay on campus. Apart from stuff like this, on campus is, or staying off campus, I'm sorry, is very, very cool because it embodies the whole tourist experience. You're traveling to a different country to experience things in a different country. Did you get it? You're traveling to a different country, you're traveling to a different country to experience things like a tourist. Forget the fact that you might be a student, international student or local student. You might be traveling from, say you're traveling from Northampton to Kent to go study, or you're traveling from Northampton to London or from London to Coventry to go study, or you're traveling from New York to California to go study, or from Texas to Colorado to go study. You are trying, you're a tourist, you're traveling, or you're traveling from Nigeria to Russia to Australia to Singapore to go study. You're a tourist. You might be a student, but you're a tourist. You're trying to travel to world, the world, and there's education in traveling. So you're trying to learn new cultures, new norms, and stuff. Now, this is what you get when you stay off campus. You meet locals. You don't just meet students, you meet locals. So you can confidently say that I know how people in London behave. I know how people in Las Vegas behave. I know how people in Sydney, in Melbourne behave. I know how people in Hong Kong behave because you've met the locals. Unlike people who stay on campus, who only meet students who are some of them too young, their mind not yet developed yet, you meet adults on, on in town and you have communication. They ask you about your country, you ask them about, about, about their countries. You go to restaurants, you can go to Nando's and have a meal and experience this culture firsthand. Now, downside to staying off campus, noise. Oh my God, <laughs> it's very noisy. When you're in town, imagine living in a set of flat that is close to the railway station or living in a set of flat that is close to the airport or living in a set of flat that is close to a nightclub noisy or even just living in a set of flat that is close to the expressway, the highway the interstate highway where cars are always going back and forth the, more, the noise the, uh, the noise is wicked so you need to take this into consideration and when I was living in town I was a perpetual noise maker I made a lot of noise because I like music I rap I used to rap back then and whenever I'm in my room the music is on my speaker my subwoofer they're all cranked up if I got complaints from the council that's something else when you're staying off campus Everything is under the regulation of the council. The neighbors could complain to the council authority and they send you a letter. They sent me a letter saying, we've received numerous complaints about your conduct in this neighborhood. Your lifestyle is very noisy and you make a lot of noise. You have to desist from this and if we give you another complaint, you're going to be charged 5,000 pounds for this alone. You need to bear this in mind. Another good thing about staying off campus is the rent, the rent is very flexible. You could get very low rent. You could stay in a neighborhood where there are low cost accommodation and you pay very low rent compared to on campus accommodation where the rent is usually fixed. The rent is usually fixed on, on campus. Uh, but the beautiful thing about on campus is the different cater of rent categories that you could afford them to. There's a rent for people who are just below average. There's average area for people who can just put just the basic there's 
opulent, affluent, and ultra rich people. They have different places where these people stay, but they're all fixed. Off campus is variable, it's flexible. You could get very cheap, and if you have a lot of money, you could go to a neighborhood that is very, very wealthy and all. But this is the difference between on campus and off campus accommodation. Another thing I failed to mention about on campus accommodation is it's very secured. The internet is very fast, but let's talk about security. It's very, very secured. If there was, say, an unrest, we all, we all watch the news or are watching the news and we know what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. Say Russia invaded Ukraine. If you were in a university, this, that environment is going to be more secure than those staying in town. So the security have the, the campus security that makes sure life and property stays secured. Off campus is the opposite, the total direct opposite. Because off campus you're in charge of yourself, and if the next door neighbor is being attacked because of maybe Russia is invading Ukraine or maybe one country is invading the other country, chances are that you're going to be attacked as well. You need to bear this in mind if you're trying to choose whether to stay on campus or off campus. How do you choose your on-campus accommodation? How do you choose? I want to stay on campus, Fuse. Tell me more about this. How can I stay or choose the best accommodation for myself if I wanted to stay on campus? Good question, sir. Very, very good question. If you want to stay on campus, the mistake I made when I was traveling to study in Northampton, the mistake with me for me, when I've been in travel to go study for Northampton, I would tell them the truth. You know, say me for this channel, I know they code anything and they talk at the way it be. In this channel, I never hide anything. I always say it the way it is. So go down and subscribe. Like, turn on the notification bell. I'm just playing. You can go subscribe though. I don't hide anything. I'm gonna tell you the mistakes I made, okay? The first mistake I made was paying for my accommodation deficit before I traveled. It was it was wrong, it was a mistake. Why? Because when I got <clears throat> Because when I got to the university, it felt like because I paid that accommodation deposit, they just put me in a box. They put me in a they, they just had this place that, oh, we're going to put him here. And I was to learn when I spent more time on campus that I had the power to tell them, no, I don't want to stay with these people. I don't want to stay in this place. This is the kind of place I wanted to stay in or the kind of people I wanted to stay with. I stayed in a dorm a dorm that was called Margaret Bonfield. Very good, it was, was perfect. A, Margaret Bonfield was for people who maybe not average class, but just a little bit average. That, that was kind of amenities that made up the dormitory in this particular block of flats. Now, there was another block of flats called Charles Bradlaugh for people who were in average class or just below average. Now, I'm not even saying these people, this is their category, but I'm just talking about this in terms of the amenities that made up this accommodation. There was another place called Spencer's Percival. Spencer Percival. Spencer Percival. Yeah, I just want to get the pronunciation right, okay? Now, this place had an accommodation where the rooms were in suit. So if you were in room one, you had your toilet and bathroom in that suit. So say in our flat, we had four to five guys. Each of them had their bathroom and toilet in their own room. This was what I wanted. If someone had sat me down and told me that, listen guy, you can actually have your toilet and bathroom to yourself, I would have gone for that option. But nobody told me this. The people in the international office, the accommodation department in the international office would not give you the opportunity to choose. I don't know why. Maybe there was limited accommodation because I think there was. Because after that year, we were literally chased off campus to go get off campus accommodation. But they never gave me the opportunity to choose where do you want to stay. Do you want to stay here? Do you want to stay there? You had the opportunity. <coughs> it's be cold, I'm not sure. <coughs> Sorry, guys. If you have, you have the opportunity to choose where you want to stay, if you want to stay off campus, if you want to stay in a particular block of flats that have this particular criteria or these amenities that makes it worth your while, you can choose. You ask questions. You can see people ask passing by regular students and stop someone and ask the kind of accommodation they have in the university, and you can choose. Or you can ask someone in the accommodation department. Can you give me options? What is the what is the difference or the unique selling points? that this dorm has that this one does not have and you choose the right place to stay. That's how you can go about choosing 
the right dorm to stay if you decide to stay on campus. Another thing you could do is you could research the, camp, the different type of accommodation they have on campus and they target university, and they target country, and they target states, and they target university in that state that you want to go to from your home, from your home country before you get on the plane and travel to the foreign country that you're going to study in. You can research it. I didn't do this. What I just did was I researched the university. I made sure they had a good sport department, a good sports program. I made sure that they had entertainment. There was karaoke, a karaoke bar, there was a pub. It was all these recreational things and the education was sound. I didn't check. I didn't go in there to see whether the accommodation was standard and if I had a choice to choose where I could stay, I didn't do this. It was a mistake that I was to later regret. So don't make the mistake I made. I just spoke about how to choose your own campus accommodation if you are an international person looking for student accommodation. How do you choose your off-campus accommodation? How? How do you do this? It's very simple guys. Every country has an international student officer. Every country, I'll repeat this, has an international student officer. These people are supposed to be your tour guide. When I got to the University of Northampton, I'm not trying to be racist or stereotypical or whatever, but I, that was the first time in my life that I, I saw a lot of white people in one place. There were so many white people, and I'm not even ignorant of the fact that not all of them were from England or Europe. Some of them were from America, some of them were from Australia and Asia and all. There were so many white people, and I made conscious efforts to identify or isolate the black people in the crowd. And I went from one person, hey, how you doing? My name is Fuse, man, how, what is your name? Oh my God, black people, we got to stick together. I know I sound, I sound like a comedian from, from some skit you watch, but trust me, this is what I did. When you are looking to stay off campus, you need to go to your international student representative, your international student officer, and ask him about the off campus accommodation in that city, in that state, or in that county. You need to ask them, where can I get the most affordable off-campus accommodation? And they will help you. They will itemize different areas that you can get the most bang out of your buck or the cheapest accommodation in that area. Tell you where you mustn't stay or shouldn't stay, where is safe and where is not safe. And when you find this out, most people I noticed like to stay with people from their country. This is very dumb, I'm not even gonna lie. The reason why I say this is very dumb is because you spent all these years in your country with the same people. I'm Nigerian, I've met more and have more friends on my phone who are Nigerians and people who I do different things with all my life who have been Nigerians. Why would I travel to America or travel to England and go and repeat the same cycle and every day I go to bed and I wake up and meet the same people that I've met all my life? Doesn't make any sense. You need to go out of your way, go out of your head and meet mix up with new people, get new friends from different countries. So even when you return back to your country, you have a network in a different country that you can tap into at any point in time. For most people, I'll rephrase, I'll go back to what I said, used to or make the habit of getting people who come from their country and they stay together in the same flat. If you don't want to stay with these people, each dorm or your school has a forum on Facebook that you could go there and you could just type looking for a roommate to stay in a cost-effective accommodation premises off campus. You're gonna get response from these people who are interested. Oh, I'm interested, how much does it cost? And there are people just like you who are lost, they're just new to this environment and they're trying to fit in and acclimatize as soon as possible. So you're gonna get tons and tons of response from different people and you can cherry pick the ones that you feel or you think are just like you and you can start staying together. When you are ready, when you've picked your potential flatmates to live together, the next thing you'll find out that you have to do is to meet your landlord. When you meet your landlord, you need to be open to the fact that the landlord is trying to get the most from his accommodation. Is trying to get the most money. You want to find out that accommodation that is going, you're going to stay and it's not going to stress you out. My landlord, when I went off campus, stressed me out a lot. 
what he did was he was always collecting money from us every two to three months and for some strange reason the, the price kept going up I just I don't know why but the price kept going up you need to be mindful of the fact that you could have a very exploitative landlord what you need to keep an eye on is the lowest rate as possible the most flexible payment plan okay you can choose your payment plan and customize around the way you make money if you're gonna work or the way your parents send money to you or the way your savings is structured are there fun activities on campus you bet your ass there are fun activities on campus in fact compared to off campus hmm, good question which is more fun which is more fun on campus or off campus now they both have their strong points number one on campus they're sporting active i love sporting i love football particularly a lot and on campus the different spots there's the university of Northampton was very good for his rugby his rugby team was very good and those guys were very when they take us in that main walk the rugby players it was it was intense they took it very seriously i love to go watch the rugby games when they play. I think it was usually on Wednesday nights. And there was also a football team that wasn't that good. I go watch them as well. And like I said earlier in this video, there was a karaoke night where me and my friends, some girls would go drink and we sing and just have fun. I love to play snooker. We go play snooker. We go to the student union club upstairs and we party. And it was it was fun. They were, you, you met a lot of people, girls and stuff, and there were parties. Different halls had their parties and there were student nights and blah 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 blah. Off campus is a little bit different. There's something I forgot to mention earlier. On campus you have you can you can if you're into privacy, you want to keep to yourself, you love your privacy. On campus, it's very hard for someone to just come back on your door. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, what are you doing? I forgot you they do now. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. It, it, there's more privacy. Off campus, there's very little privacy. It's easy for someone to just open your door without even knocking. I say, dude, what are you doing? And stuff. So there's no, there's, there's no privacy. Now, off campus, you could wake up and just go to the club. You could be very close to your neighbors and maybe you go out for a cigarette and you stand out with your neighbors and you're smoking, you're talking and you're just talking about stuff and in the midst of that conversation they might tell you about an employment opportunity or a business opportunity or maybe there's a fundraiser going on because you need to understand that the people you're going to be talking to or the people you're going to be speaking with regularly or off campus that's in town are adults they're not young like the students you mix up with on campus we're talking about men who might be married women who might be married or women who are men who are bachelors and women who are spencers the content of the conversations you have is going to be different from that which people have on campus in that alone you know that there's going to be more room for more fun you get there's going to be more room for more fun conversations someone could just knock on your door give you a call send you a text i'm outside getting to my car and you take a trip to liverpool from coventry it just depends on your personality and how open you are to different levels of fun for some people on campus are fun particularly the younger and that crowd is your cup of tea and off campus for some people is more fun particularly if they're older and they have or would like to have more mature conversation is there a drug problem for people who stay on and off campus is there a drug problem or is there a potential or is there potential to be or is there a potential drug problem could you have a flatmate who is a junkie or I'm, I'm talking about on and off campus yes this is highly likely now i'm not saying there's a probability that it's highly likely i'll tell you something that happened while i was staying on campus a friend of mine told me oh listen um there's this person who the reason why i'm saying person and i'm not saying it's a girl or a boy is because i, I want to keep this person's identity private because there are people who know me and who have known me and upon hearing this story will know the person that I'm talking about and they never knew this person had a drug problem. I'm not trying to call this person out. I just want to just have your take 
the moral lesson from this story. There was this person who left Nigeria and came to England, particularly Northampton, to study. And I was to find out that this person had a very, very big, huge drug problem. I let the cat out of the bag when I oversold myself to the person and I said, oh, whatever you want in this town, I can get it to you. And I could get it to the person or get it to anybody that wanted whatever they wanted in that town because I'm that kind of person. Every other day, I was getting text messages and phone calls from this person. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. And these were all different categories or ranges of hard drugs. And for some strange reason, please don't ask me how, I had people, or I knew people who were in a position to provide this for this person. This person was always, sometimes this person came to my place and I had to send a message to this person to bring it to my place or go over to this place to get whatever substance this person wanted until a day that the Connect sold what I might call a proper, an improper product. Maybe that's not the word to use. He basically sold an adulterated product to this person who was a junkie and this person almost died. Suffice to say that, that you're from Russia or you're from America or you're from England or you drug problems is not a respecter of whatever current country that you buy you from. So yes, on campus and off campus, you there's a high chance and probability that you're going to be staying with someone who has a drug problem. So you need to open yourself up to this reality and accept it if you find yourself in this particular situation and tell yourself it's not the end of the world. You can either choose to relate or not to relate or associate or not to associate with this kind of people. So you are thinking about what you're going to do for your student accommodation, international students, local students, but you have a problem. Maybe there's a student who's always bullying you. Maybe there's a student who is always stealing from you. I did not mention this, but whether you're on campus or off campus, there could still be theft. When I was on campus, I heard stories about people who were breaking into other people's dorms and stealing their food. I knew who these people were, but I did not write anybody out. When I was off campus, they were flatmates of mine that were, they formed the habit of going to your stuff and taking your stuff. Or maybe you're getting debt threat. Or maybe you're being racially violated, racially abused, like I was when I was working for a particular company in England. Now, if you want to hear about this story of when I was racially abused, by a potential customer when I was working for one of the companies I worked for in England. A video is going to pop up. You might want to skip to that video and hear about that story. But the negative things happening to you, you get bad is what they do you. People just they find your trouble, just they cause cancer everywhere. Maybe you get girl where they abuse you every time, or you get employee where they treat you anyhow. So there are people that are just making your life abroad hell and you're looking where am i going to report this where am i going to report this the only place you have to go to report this when it happens is your student center and as an international student is called an international student center as a local student is called a just a student center or you could go to the counselor in the, 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 most schools abroad have a voluntary association and that voluntary unit has counselors there. You can go to any one of these two places. It's very important that as an international student, you go to your international student office and meet your international student representative to report this before you go to the police. Because when you leave your country to go study in a different country overseas, that school in that foreign country becomes your sponsor. If you go to the police directly to report this when it happens, you are violating the set and laid down protocol of how these issues are supposed to be handled. Do you understand what I mean? I want to believe that this video has been helpful to people who are in a state, in a country, looking to go to a different state to study. In a country, 
maybe in Africa and looking to go into another country, maybe in Europe, maybe in America, maybe in Asia, to go study by virtue of the student accommodation that they're going to be occupying when they get to this target country, target state, target city, or target university. If this video has been helpful to you in any way, shape, or form, why don't you do me a solid? Go down, 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 and smash the subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so when we drop contents like this or contents that you're interested in on this channel, you could catch these contents or these videos when they drop. And if this video has been helpful to you, come on, man, what are you doing? Do your boy a favor. Give us a thumbs up. The thumbs up really helps us a lot. It tells the YouTube algorithm that you were interested in this content and they inform us that, listen, Chewy was interested in this content. Why don't you make more of this kind of content for Chewy because he likes it, okay? And if you have friends, neighbors, family members who are looking to go to a different country to study, why don't you share this video with them so they can give better advice about the best student accommodation for them in a foreign country or in a different state. Like I always say, your happiness is your property. You don't need anybody else to make you happy. Your mom, your dad, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband cannot make you happy. The only person that can make you happy is that person who is staring back at you in the mirror. So choose to be happy today. Until the next one, guys, have a good week ahead. Bye-bye for now.